What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. So this one was what I would consider a day two play. The reason why I'd call this a day two play is because a lot of people were like, how come you didn't call this like a day five play or a day whatever play? I really kind of called it a day two play because it was kind of the, the, the second day after a large kind of move. I Obviously, this one had done quite a bit of volume. This would be another type of day two play, I'd call it. But I mean, for me, I just kind of call it a day two play because I didn't really hear about it down here. I, I The first day I, I heard about this stock was, was this day. And then so this was kind of the day two move. I was calling it a day two move because it's kind of day two from when I've heard about it and when I think from a lot of people have heard about it as well. So it had a lot of people short. Um, again, I had to flip my bias. Uh, 150 was defending really well, which I'll talk about later in the video. Everyone knew, everyone Everyone knew the dilution story and sometimes on these types of stocks when too many people know the dilution story when too many people are over convicted and saying well it has to dilute it has to dilute sometimes those can end up turning into the best longs because they end up squeezing out so many shorts who are just really really stubborn and just refuse to cover so we know that obviously there is some type of you know dilution story stubborn shorts again over bias will kill you in this game and you need to realize that when you're wrong and when your plan isn't working out you just need to cut and then reevaluate and then you can re-add and yes this will end up being a great short it, it will like especially with the the dilution story that a lot of people are talking about especially with the setup the play obviously it will make a great short one day but until until we kind of get that and until we start to get that that backside that unwind for me it, it it's just gonna end up being a long unfortunately so i'm just gonna kind of go over my commentary because i know uh i know some people don't have access to the archive and i know that uh it might it might also kind of show you the bigger picture of what i was thinking because i was pretty much just jotting my thoughts down in main chat saying like does anyone kind of think the same as me does anyone kind of see this and um basically i said you know the play's not breaking down i'll, I'll get to the chart in a, in a moment i just want to kind of sum it up so i can kind of show you these messages as well so basically i was saying you know this stock is not breaking down like i wanted it to I had a plan to basically short pops after a death candle for some further breakdown, just couldn't happen. It refused to keep breaking down. It, it would kind of go under 150 and then immediately reclaim 150. So I was saying like, listen, this is not breaking down like I wanted it to. And then I kind of said again, like, you know, honestly, I'm thinking about going long. This is obviously uh, looking like a kind of a good long play. So uh, I was saying, you know, I'm honestly thinking about long it. And then I said, you know, even, I, I know that I took the long position somewhere in around here. I don't really like to alert plays because uh, it's not really what MIC is about. And I just kind of try and show my general thought process and then you can kind of make your own decision. So I said like, even as a long, I wanted, I wanted GNUS to break down. I wanted it to break. I wanted my original short thesis to be correct. I, I wanted to be still proven right, even though I flipped bias because I thought like, listen, this could give us some great unwind. If this breaks down and stops me out as a long, I'm perfectly fine to go uh, and, and short the pops as, a, as a, a short trader again and flip my bias again because that's what kind of the stock is telling me. But as it started to creep up, I started saying, you know, there we go. Like, you know, it's going higher and higher. And then after it kind of squeezed everyone out, I said, wow. And then, yeah, I just posted, you know, I was, this was like kind of, I was my average price or whatever. And I, I said, like, I was actually short after the death candle. But when I saw it, it couldn't break down. I ended up flipping long. And that was kind of key for me. And that was definitely a big lesson for me. Because when I saw those 150s break down, you know, every single person who's a short is is like happy. It's around 150. We need 150 to crack. 150's got to crack. But it just refused to break 150. And 150 must have defended like, I don't know, eight to nine times. Like it would just go under 150, reclaim, go under 150, reclaim, go under 150, reclaim. That line was a really, really big line in the sand. Basically, I, I just... 
I, I saw the, the the defense and the volume, and I said to myself, like, wow, like, this is pretty strong. Like, uh, my plan was basically, you know, I'll short, a, I'll short a pop, and hopefully we can get some further breakdown. But unfortunately, what happened was that the stock just refused to break down. So I had to cover, and I had to reevaluate my thesis. And when I reevaluated, I ended up coming up and just saying to myself, okay, this could also make a really great long play because we have so many shorts trapped down here. Without further ado, here's the chart. So basically in the morning, this was just kind of like a first bounce. I, I was just kind of messing around with it. Uh, I was I was like, it's not a boredom trade, but it's more so I just kind of wanted to see the personality of the stock and the way it was kind of trading. So sometimes I can do that by going, get like taking a long and then just bailing out and just seeing how this how the personality of the stock was. And so yeah, basically, I, I ended up taking a short up here. Uh, I took another one right here on the on the pop, I probably should have, I should, probably should have covered down here. That was my mistake. I, I just thought that maybe on this pop, we could get a further crack down. And maybe I mean, I was thinking maybe like it could go red on the day. It's a day two. some of these day two unwinds are really powerful. So I just basically said to myself, No, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna short this pop and see how it reacts. And immediately for 10 minutes, we tried to break 150 and couldn't break, couldn't break, couldn't break, couldn't break, couldn't break, couldn't break, finally broke. And then it started to reclaim again. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to cover here. I think I covered the rest up here and then ended up going long. The reason why I ended up going long was because of this this colossal kind of trap, because I thought I think there were a lot of short sellers who didn't want to go short up here in case this move went higher to two to three. But when they saw this crack and they saw this reclaim, they were like, okay, well, we're definitely, we're definitely safe. We can definitely take a short here. It's under view app. And I was thinking that too, like, yeah, I'm definitely safe to take a short here. I almost should have covered right here because even though we did get this eventual drop, this could have easily just reclaimed right here. So I ended up kind of getting lucky here. And then when I saw this reclaimed, I was like, wow, that that's a strong type of move. Cause I mean, for you to have this death candle like that, to hold for so long, I expected this to be a quick short and then it to go right back down. But when it didn't, and it didn't really follow my plan, that's a time where I was just kind of saying to myself, okay, wow, like this, this is, this is something that is like almost like a red flag for me if I'm a short seller. So anyway, ended up going long up here covering the rest. I just kind of just held for for this bigger squeeze because I know that there were so many people who are trying to go short and bet against the stock going down in this type of area. So I guess there's a there's a couple takeaways. Number one, this is a day two move. So we kind of got this squeeze up here. Obviously, nice little kind of first bounce down here in this area kept continuing higher. I caught another like little small bounce right here, you know, not a big one, but just one for fun just to say I just play them when I see them. So you know, I kind of like it. Again, we were kind of getting this I took kind of like a starter up here. And then you know, we get the flush. And then obviously, we're seeing can't break down, can't break down, can't break down, can't break down. A lot of people were asking me, like, what did you think about the volume? Well, because it's after zombie time, we usually get reduced volume then from this 9 to, to 10, 30 range. So we were kind of getting this reduced volume after, the, after this crack, but it, it was just like... I really wanted this to break down, but when it couldn't, that was like a massive, massive, you know, as I said before, red flag, because I mean, I just had to say to myself, like, this is not breaking down the way I wanted it. It had reclaimed this previous kind of support. 150 was kind of a big player. Uh, whereas we had to kind of hold the 150 area over here and go higher. We had another 150 hold and go higher. It's also a dollar fifty. So these kind of uh, hole and half dollar marks are always, always, they're always aligned on these type of type of sub dollar stocks. So I mean, that's just something to be aware of. And then again, as we start to get this slow grind up, you know that shorts are are kind of panicking, but they're not really worried because I mean, when they look, they're only down like, you know, five cents. So they're saying to themselves, Oh, well, I'm only down five cents, I can hold this a little bit longer. And then when it gets up to 60s, they're saying to themselves, Oh, I'm only down, you know, I'm only down 10 cents a share. Like this thing's obviously going to go down. It's day two. We've already gotten a death candle. Like we're okay. And as it starts to grind up higher, the more it grinds up higher, the more stubborn shorts just end up getting pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. This was the point where I was like, wow, big trade for me. And that was the point where I sold because I could kind of feel in myself like, okay, really big trade for me. And it's something that I, I need to take off and just, you know, take profits and uh, just kind of sell it near the top of the range. So some takeaways from this one, if it isn't following your plan, it is okay to cut. It's always okay to cut. 
if it's not following your plan. The below view app traps can be deadly. And that's kind of what we saw here where trapped below view app, everyone, everyone was saying death candle below view app, the dilution situation, day two backside. We know that it can fade. It's definitely going to 40 cents and that didn't end up happening. Always better off cutting early and re-adding when the stock confirms than cutting too late and getting a big loss and not having the opportunity to re-add later. And that is important. There's a lot of mental capital that comes into this as well. So conserve your mental capital. If something's not doing what you want, cut it, cut it, cut it, and re-add later. Always stick to your plan. That's what I did here. I stuck to my plan. I respected my risk and I ended up flipping long. The volume was also very strong. It was a strong stock on the day. On this day, we were getting a lot of kind of weirdos as Bao and Alex were calling them because we had a lot of VWAP reclaims, a lot of strange stuff going on. So just be aware what the market is doing as a whole and the market sediment. Again, stock wouldn't die and zombie rules as well, right? You can have stocks that zombie like this after after 1030. And I mean, sometimes you can even get like zombies uh, earlier than that. So it, it all it all depends on uh, your risk management. And had of I not even been short and respected kind of the zombie rule, I wouldn't have even found myself in this type of situation. But at the end of the day, I am kind of happy that I was in this situation happy that I flipped my bias, happy that I went long, and I'm just happy with my own individual growth, and I hope that uh, everyone can kind of see my mindset on the trade. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm always in chat. Uh, I always answer DMs, and uh, yeah, until next time, uh, see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.